I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Jennifer Hillary, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Oak Grove Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So you teach at Florin High School. Yes. But you do more than teach. Kind of go through the, the litany of things that you do there. <laughs> Um, I am currently the EL coordinator for Florin High School. I've been the, the coordinator for about 10 years um, for the English language department, um, English language learner department. Uh, I teach beginning EL, so students who are brand new to the country, um, EL social science, so that's geography, U.S. history, world history, government, economics. I teach intermediate EL, women's studies, which um, I had to advocate for that class to bring it to Florence, so that's really fun. And uh, Sedai U.S. History, which is a college prep class. What is Sedai? So that's specially designed academic instruction in English. So that's for um, EL students who are advanced, who are getting college prep credit. Okay. So let's talk about EL social science. Okay. Why so specific? When I first started teaching at Florin, um, that was one of the first classes I was assigned to teach um, a Sedai uh, uh, geography, world geography class, and it was for our advanced EL students. And the thing that's really fun about teaching Sedai social science is that you incorporate um, language skills. You incorporate reading, writing, speaking, um, uh, reading, writing, speaking, and listening into um, your course of study. So it's not only teaching them about social science, but it's also sort of kind of being a quasi English teacher as okay. well. So you're combining a lot of skills. Mm -hmm. So let's let's get on to uh, women's studies. Okay. Um, you hear about that mostly in colleges. Yes. But tell me the value at the high school level. Uh, I think it's probably one, been one of the most invigorating things I've done, um, and the students absolutely love it. Uh, it is very much like something you would get at a college course, um, and. I get to see the way that the both men and women in my class um, really, they really enjoy the class because we're talking about things that affect them today. Um, and I get to see real change happen, which is really fun, really real social change. So, so, you know, like I said, you normally think of that as a college level course. Mm -hmm. is, is that especially empowering for the high school girls? I think it's really empowering, yes, for the, for the girls at the school because most of them have never taken a class that specifically talks about the issues that they go through today. And that's what I'm doing. It's not a women in history class. Mm -hmm. It's a women's studies class. And so we talk about social issues today. Um, so they sort of dictate what's happening, what our, our, our subject matter is. And that's been really fun. Um, but, the, but I also really think it's important for young young boys to take the class, young men, um, because I think that it, it, it helps them with character as well. And I think it helps them be aware of issues that they weren't aware of, because everybody has a mother, a sister, a brother, you know, sister, mm -hmm. a wife, a, you know, so, girlfriend. So, makes them better men. Makes them better people. Yeah. And it does. Yeah. So now, on top of all that, you also coach. Yes. I've coached the men's varsity uh, soccer team for uh, 14 years at Florence. So. so how difficult is it to, to balance being uh, a full-time teacher and, and being a coach? To be a really good coach, you have to be very present because um, you're so many things. You're, it, the thing that's really neat, neat about coaching is that um, I get to connect with the kids um, in a slightly different way than you can in the classroom. Um, and it helps me actually in the classroom because I get instant credibility for being a coach, especially of a men's sport. Um, there aren't many female coaches of men's sports out there, so um, that's been really interesting. Um, but you have—it's very—it's very much a full-time job. I mean, to be a really good coach, it's very, very time-consuming. So, the various hats that I wear take up a lot of time. So, what do you, what do you learn as a teacher that helps you as a coach, and what about learning as a coach that helps you as a teacher? Patience. Um, when I've had a, a tough day um, in the classroom, I have to be really aware that I'm not bringing it to the field, which mm -hmm. I have before. Um, but I have high expectations, and I have them both in my classroom and on the field. Mm -hmm. um, and we, uh, our school has not always been a powerhouse in the sport. Um, when I first took it over, um, we didn't have uniforms. We didn't have... Um, 
any really any gear. Um, and I don't think I think we were getting beat like 17 to nothing. Um, we've we've won our league um, in the time I've been there. And so I, I'm able to show kids that with hard work and perseverance that you can accomplish really great things, even if you don't start out with uh, with everything. And so that's been I'm able to show my students in the classroom those things from soccer, from coaching soccer. Well, a good coach is a good teacher. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the same way around, a good yeah. teacher is a good yeah, coach. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So now you've been teaching for how long total? Uh, I've been at Florin uh, for 15 years and 14 years paid because I did my student teaching there. Oh, you did. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, uh, what's it like to be at the same campus for that long a period of time and and to kind of grow as a teacher mm -hmm. um, at the same school? It's been really fun because I, uh, when I first came, uh, when I first started at, at Florin and start, first started in education, it's just interesting to see how I've evolved um, over the years and how I've transformed as a teacher over the years. Um, I have, I think that my perspective has changed. Um, I'm aware, I see when new teachers come in, I kind of understand where they're coming from. I also understand I'm sort of in that middle spot now in the teaching. I'm not mm -hmm. towards the end, I'm in that middle. And so I kind of, I understand what it, was, what it was like to have all that energy and excitement and how to channel that um, in a positive way for new teachers. So I like, I've been able to see all the different sort of pieces so far of teaching. And in fun. that period of time, you've seen a lot of changes in education and yes. uh, different expectations for teachers. Yes. What's that been like? I love, when I first started teaching, um, I remember, <laughs> I remember it was very much um, what we were doing in the classroom was driven by the STAR test. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very much, it was a lot of, um, it felt like a lot of bubbling <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, reciting dates and because I'm a social science teacher, reciting dates and, and, and facts. Um, I love Common Core because I feel like it opens up everything for the kids so you have to be a critical thinker you can't just know the date of something you need to know why that was that was important and how that piece informs something else and it's so you have to be able to and be able to articulate all of that just conversationally and in writing and so I've seen that as a really big change and because I've always done a yell I've been um, able to sort of bring that writing piece in um, my whole career so that's one thing that hasn't changed, but education has changed. Mm -hmm. And so with Common Core, in math, not only do you give me the answer, but you tell me how you got to the mm -hmm. answer. In social science, don't just give me the date and tell me what happened, tell me why it happened. Yeah, and how that potentially could happen again, and the causes and effects, and yeah, all of that. All and of so that. how are you finding students be able to better articulate those things now? I think that um, three years ago, it was really, really tough for them. It was, uh, a lot of hitting a wall um, because we're asking kids to do things that they weren't used to doing and it's mm -hmm. hard and especially when you don't feel confident about what you're doing it's it, it I think a lot of kids didn't feel good kids who were once maybe really high performing or test really good test takers didn't have the ability to write their thoughts out um, so I think three years ago it was really tough but I've seen incremental change and that's been really fun to see the strengths of the kids I mean, they don't fight me anymore about writing, mm -hmm. and they don't, and, and the stuff that we're talking about and we're writing about are interesting. So it doesn't have to be so daunting. You've seen the growth. Oh, amazing growth. So I'm excited about what, what's going out there. Mm. Well, what is it like being a teacher of the year? What, what does it mean to you? I feel very honored. Um, I'm proud to represent El Grove Unified School District, and I'm especially proud to represent Florin High School. Florin has had three uh, teachers of the Year, mm -hmm. and um, Tim Smith, um, who was our State Teacher of the right. Year. Um, so I feel very proud to um, be in the company of the, of the individuals who have made it through my school. Um, so I'm just proud because Florin doesn't always get a lot of really positive um, accolades, and so it's nice to be representing Florin in a positive way. So I'm very proud. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. We've been speaking with uh, Jennifer Hillary, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Oak Grove Unified School District. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.